Good morning, Houston, and welcome to Feeling Better Naturally with Dr. John Trowbridge here on this LCH Planetary Education Project. Are you fearful that better health seems out of your reach regardless of how hard you try or whatever you do? Are you afraid of suffering with heart disease or diabetes or lingering with stroke or cancer? Or do you avoid thinking about these things because you'll just try to make the best of it, whatever happens? Are you limited by joint pains or finding that you can't run from your headaches? Maybe you're hesitant to try something new because you're afraid that what you'll do is wrong. Or maybe because you'd better be right or nothing will ever help. Regardless of what might be happening with your health problems, these next few minutes could be the answer to your prayers. Unless, of course, you're convinced that your doctors have done everything possible, or if you've already decided to have surgery but you're waiting till you worsen further. But if you hold out any hope at all, then you should know that we see desperate people every day, people skeptical about whether anything we can do can make a difference in their lives. And sure enough, many of them are pleasantly surprised. Maybe you could be one of them. After all, the only thing you have to lose is your discomfort, your fear, your worry, maybe even your anger that no one has really listened to you or that no one has been able to help you. We'll be talking about what you can do to get out of your pain and get on with your life. I've practiced for 25 years, never believing that you're suffering from a deficiency of one or more drugs or that an operation is probably the best answer. Whatever ails you, God built your system to repair itself and to restore more normal function. And that, in a nutshell, is the whole buzz on the topic of alternative or holistic medicine that you've been hearing about these past few years. Drugs and surgery can be helpful, but true natural healing depends on three factors. First, find what's blocking you from feeling better and remove it. Second, find what trace factors you might be missing but you need for repair and provide them. And third, find what switches need to be turned on and turn them on. We'll share practical pointers to help you improve with the most common problems seen in doctors' offices, practical preventive medicine updates to help reduce your risk factors for the most serious diseases that claim our comfort and then our lives, and practical ways to reduce your risks and improve your results with drugs and surgery that you might need. As I've said for years, when life is your choice, failure is not an option. So learn more today on how you can succeed. And if what we offer doesn't apply to you right now, then share this life-saving information with family or friends who do need to know. The book of Ecclesiastes tells us in chapter 1, verse 9, that there is no new thing under the sun. So let's see what we might learn from those who've walked the path ahead of us. <clears throat> this is an anonymous quote. Friends are God's way of taking care of us. If you should die before me, ask if you could bring along a friend. Interesting introduction. And perhaps we should be making these introductions all through our lives for everything that we find beneficial. Haley from Spring Branch wrote to ask me to explain why symptoms of congestive heart failure seem to be missed so often. So let's turn our attention to a common problem, which we'll review today as congestive heart failure and cardiomyopathy, a cousin. Now, <clears throat> we're talking about something important here. The annual mortality rate ranges for congestive heart failure from 10% in stable patients with mild symptoms to more than 50%, more than half, in symptomatic patients with advanced disease. So this is important. Sudden death due to ventricular arrhythmias, fancy heart rhythm disturbances, it occurs in about 40% or more of the patients with heart failure. So the way you can die doesn't matter. You end up just as dead if you start out with congestive heart failure. Now, the definition is that this is the principal complication of heart disease, and it's an abnormality in heart pump function. Now, the heart is unable to transport blood in a sufficient flow to meet metabolic needs or what your body's looking for, so congestive heart failure occurs at some time in most cases of severe heart disease. It is, incidentally, the most common inpatient diagnosis for patients who are over 65, in other words, the Medicare population. Males are greater than females in the ages from 40 to 75, and after that, it's about equal. Now, the early to mild impairment is perhaps the hardest to spot. 
you might see it with getting up frequently at night for urination, or shortness of breath on exertion. Um, the more you do, the worse it gets. Deteriorating exercise capacity you can't do, which you used to be able to do. Easy fatiguing or difficulty breathing and weakness. Even heart racing or fast racing of your breathing with mild exertion. As you get to have more moderate impairment, in other words, as things start to get worse, you might even develop a nighttime cough that just, you don't bring anything up. You just <coughs> kind of coughing stuff, almost clearing your throat, but with more emphasis. Or difficulty breathing when you're lying down. Even wheezing, especially if you haven't had a history of asthma or infection. You might lose your appetite. You might feel anxious. You might have cold extremities, you know, your hands and feet. And that's due to the circulation changes in your legs and your hands. You can develop edema or fluid swelling, most noticeable about the ankles, the feet, and the lower legs. The severe impairment gets increasingly obvious. That's the one that's easy to pick up by the doctors. You look pretty bad. The general measures of treatment is pretty simple. You have to immediately treat the heart failure and then search for underlying correctable conditions. Of course, everybody knows that they slap on oxygen and stockings and do all sorts of things. Now, you know, heart failure is an interesting problem because you think of your organs as working just fine, and then they don't. And one of the problems is it doesn't happen suddenly. It's not like an overnight thing, or at least... The dramatic symptoms often are within a matter of hours, but the gradual buildup can take years. Cardiomyopathies are kind of a cousin. These are a group of diseases that primarily involve the heart muscle. They're characterized by a muscle dysfunction that's not the result of high blood pressure or hardening of the arteries or valve dysfunction in the heart or things like that. In dilated cardiomyopathy, which is the one we're going to talk about right now, the heart is enlarged. The prevalence in the general adult population is about 1 in 100, and the incidence with age approaches 10% at age 80. Of course, a lot of people have already died by that point because of you know, congestive failure and other problems. <laughs> Alcoholism can be associated with 15 to 40% of all cases in Western countries. But I brought this up specifically because of toxins. Cobalt, lead, phosphorus, carbon monoxide, mercury, doxorubicin and downorubicin, which are drugs, cancer drugs, even heart drugs. But the key is, is that these toxins can create cardiomyopathy. Nutritional problems such as beriberi, selenium deficiency, carnitine, a vitamin deficiency, even thiamine deficiency, these things can create cardiomyopathies. And what we create at the time then is a problem of heart function, which is not due to blockage disease. Now, I tell people that there's two kinds of blockages. One is a mechanical blockage. That's where, uh, just like with your radiator or with your teapot, you see scale building up inside, and that's uh, obvious thickening, and that happens inside blood vessels. That's the hardening of the arteries that thickens and gradually limits the blood flow through the arteries. But there's also a concept of metabolic blockage, and that's where what's happening inside the cells of your heart and your other organs is that the energy production system is beginning to fail. And not only that, but what's happening is you are breaking down the functions that are normally supposed to happen in that tissue. They're happening less and less well and eventually not happening at all. And as more of those tissues get in trouble, then more of the problems that you see are associated with illness and eventually death. Now, that's not the way it's normally explained, but gosh, that's the way it generally happens. And it can be related to toxic blockages. Those would be chemicals and toxic metals, as we so often talk about. And nutritional deficiencies, just the trace factors that you need to keep going, but you don't have them, so you keep going as best you can. And then switches that aren't turned on, hormonal imbalances and others that just aren't making you work as well as you should. And as we conclude this part of today's show, I want to remind you that the Kaiser Family Foundation says that American children and adolescents spend 22 to 28 hours per week viewing television, which is more than any other activity except sleeping. And by the age of 70, they will have spent 7 to 10 years of their lives watching TV. 
and I bring this up because you're not going to find the answers to congestive failure and cardiomyopathy on TV. The time is about 10 past the hour, and you're listening to Feeling Better Naturally with Dr. John Trowbridge, a planetary education project of life celebrating health with the best medical updates ever. Your extended health forecast is brought to you now by Life Celebrating Health in Humble, near Bush Intercontinental Airport. Our crystal ball shows clear to partly cloudy and the winds of change blowing. Are you acting more like an ostrich, burying your head in the sand because you don't feel able to deal with your health problems? Then your tail feathers will be getting wet when partly cloudy skies change to rain. Perhaps you're clucking around, kind of happy that a new medication has you feeling better but not realizing that those fancy patches and band-aids might not be the best for you. If you're not changing anything and simply hoping for the best because you've been feeling pretty good, or maybe you're afraid or unsure, then cloudy to very stormy skies are on your horizon. Or just maybe you're ready to make changes to regain and maintain better health, then sunny skies are coming your way. At Life Celebrating Health, you can depend on us as partners in your health care. And we'll design personalized programs to help keep your days sunny. And we'll show you how to spend less and get more. Call for your free telephone consultation with one of our treatment assistants. No fee, no obligation. Just dial 1-800-FIX-PAIN. That's 1-800-F-I-X-P-A-I-N. 1-800-FIX-PAIN. Ask to receive our free e-newsletter. Just share with us your email address or send your questions to us through our Internet website, www.healthchoicesnow.com. Dot com because unlike the weather, you do have choices for better health. Today we're joined by a very special friend of mine who is a medical journalist, an author, someone who has done wonderful things to help spread the word and even inform the doctors. This is Arlene Brecker, who is a science and medical writer, investigative reporter, and science researcher, and that's true, specializing in behavioral sciences, nutrition, and allied subjects with an acknowledged expertise in EDTA chelation therapy and biooxidative therapies. She's a member of the National Science Writers Association, the National Medical Writers Association, the Authors Guild, and National Writers Association. She's on the board of directors of WellMind Association of Greater Washington. She's an honorary lifetime member and consultant to the board of directors of the International College of Integrative Medicine, and is also serving as executive director of AMMPS, the Alternative Medicine Media Professionals. Now, she was formerly a consultant to the Mental Health Services Research and Development Branch of the NIH, a division of Technology of Change, and has been a ghostwriter for a nationally syndicated physician bylined medical column. She's co-authored five best-selling books for the lay reader, including, and this goes back so far because I read this when I was in medical school, Psychodietetics, 1974, and then Bypassing the Bypass, and my favorite, 40 Something Forever, A Consumer's Guide to Chelation Therapy. It's now in its 41st printing with over 600,000 copies in print. It's a five-star book on Amazon.com. She's been on the lecture circuit, delivers seminars, has appearances on radio and TV, and serves as the editorial director of Health Savers Press, which publishes and distributes health-related books and tapes, and, of course, the website www.healthsavers.info. I had to put that in early because I want to make sure you remember it. She's also been the founder and director of the world's first online information service devoted specifically to alternative medicine, the Alternative Medicine Connection, now in its 12th year as a website, and it has uh, MedSearch with 12,000 alt-med doctors in its database, and that is www.arxc.com. I am thrilled to have joining us today Arlene Brecker, as I say, the author of 40-something forever, assisted by her husband and the parrot. (laughs) (laughs) I hope the parrot is monitoring the conversation today to make sure everything you say is truthful. (laughs) Actually, actually, Harold's afraid to leave him near the phone because <laughs> he can't stand not getting his conversation in ahead His of two ours. cents worth, that's <laughs> right. And, and so Harold is monitoring the parrot so that the parrot will not be monitoring the program. <laughs> oh, goodness. All right. Well, we'll get a, an, an advanced copy to the parrot. That's right. <laughs> Arlene and I go back, as, as I say, quite a while, and I have enjoyed wonderfully watching 
her production of books and newsletters and materials to help get people aware what's really happening in this world that we can have people feel well, 40-something forever. Well, it really, you couldn't have picked a more wonderful day. I'm going to give you a heads up on tomorrow's big headline. Oh, good. And this was not something I was prepared to talk about, but I... Um, I uh, logged but we'll on, have to. I logged on to Drudge Report, and here's the headline. Okay. New York Times, tomorrow morning, will be doing an in-depth article. Now, I don't know how in-depth it'll be, because I can do it in-depth, and I'm going to. The collapse of the Earth's magnetic field, which both guards the planet and guides many of its creatures, appears to have started in earnest about 150 years ago, and the New York Times is planning to report on this on page one, tomorrow morning, science reporter Bill Broad has filed a report which explores how the field strength has waned 10 to 15 percent so far, and this deterioration has accelerated of late, increasing debate over whether it portends a reversal of the lines of magnetic force that normally envelop the Earth. Now, let me put that in context to the people who are listening to this and are saying to themselves now, what has that got, <laughs> what to, has do that got to do with my health? <laughs> well, let me tell you, and Dr. Trowbridge, I can't tell you too much about this. You've been into magnets for a long time. I sleep on a Magnetico sleep pad but for this, years. Yes. Now, this information has come to me from Dr. Dean Bonleys, who uh, educated me quickly uh, about the development of this problem that he's been involved with ever since the Japanese physicist who first alerted the world to this, the scientific world, nobody else. NASA became involved because they realized early on that when they sent uh, their space cadets out, out of the magnetic field of Earth, they came back with crumbling bones. That's right. And they understood very quickly that what the Japanese scientist, Dr. Kiyoshi Nakawawa, considered a coming disaster for the, for the world, obviously was being predestined by space travel. Exactly. And what this Japanese phys- physicist then confirmed with others with his um, expertise in these matters, was that the Earth was losing magnetic energy at a disastrously accelerating rate. And by the 1980s, he came up with a new prediction. And the prediction was that within the next 30 to 50 or 100 years, we would be engulfed with a series of epidemic diseases, which it would take a while for the scientists and the physicians and the medical authorities to understand. And what he called it was magnetic energy deficiency. Right, deficiency syndrome. And now some of the research that they have done will just be is mind-blowing because among the research they wanted to find out what happens what happens to the to life force to life energy when they're put into either low magnetic or fields areas where there is no magnetic energy at all and so they took 20 rats that's what they always do isn't it they (laughs) sealed them off that are lawyers (laughs) and they put them in a compound where there was no magnetic energy at all, and they watched them to see what would happen. The, all the rats got very sluggish, slow-moving, just didn't have energy to move around. One died very early on. But the really exciting finding was this. The ultimate result, before they let them out, was in order to increase their energy, the rats desperate to be able to live a normal rat life, gorge themselves on food, and they all turned obese. Does that sound like something that's happening around us today? Sure does, doesn't it? Sounds like an imbalance getting expressed. Sure does. Wow. Well, I hate bringing, I was trained early in my 
medical writing career that you don't present a problem without presenting a solution. And the fact that this uh, new catastrophe, which we can't do anything about as far as changing it, this isn't like global warming or something like that. You go out and you burn your SUVs and just bicycle back and forth. That's not going to change things. Um, but what we have found is that there is a way of replacing that magnetic energy for the human being, the individual, so that you will not only not be harmed by it, but whatever problems you have very likely will be um, magnetized away. The research that's going on now, and we are in stage three of an FDA-approved IRB. Um, they're very, very nervous. There are seven centers in the country, more starting all the time. The next one to open will be August 15th. I got the word tonight from Dr. Roberts, Jim Roberts of Toledo. And this will be the first magnetic energy center devoted to cardiovascular treatment, which, of course, is why we are so excited about this, since that's been a specialty of ours for a long time and more so of late. Outstanding. Arlene, hold that thought. We're going to return to you to talk more about 40-something forever and magnetic treatments. It's now about 21 past the hour here on Feeling Better Naturally with Dr. John Trowbridge with the best medical updates ever. Let's pause briefly for this public service announcement. Consumers for Dental Choice was established in 1996 by consumer advocates, mercury poisoning victims, scientists, and mercury-free dentists as a nonprofit organization. Dr. Hal Huggins, a pioneer mercury-free dentist in 1996 after the launching of the project, said, How often do you get the chance to improve the lives of a billion people? Now, CDC's work has grown now to include the legal challenges to state regulations which prohibit mercury-free dentists from advising dental consumers about the risks of mercury amalgams, as well as support of national and state legislation to require informed consent before placement of mercury amalgam fillings, and to limit the use of mercury amalgams in vulnerable populations and to ban the use of mercury amalgam fillings for all by the year 2008. Mercury amalgam silver fillings, incidentally, the primary component is mercury, not silver. It's 50% of the filling, and that does expose a lot of us. Now, in case you think that really doesn't matter, in San Francisco, the Public Utilities Commission just announced that it's requiring about 600 dentist offices to get wastewater treatment permits, just like other businesses that discharge toxic chemicals and prevent mercury from heading for sewage plants and eventually the San Francisco Bay and the ocean. For more information on this incredibly important topic, go to www.toxicteeth, T-O-X-I-C-T-E-E-T-H, toxicteeth.org. What about if you're born from July 23rd to August 22nd, your sign is Leo. Uh, so what? July flowers, the larkspur and the water lily. Remember to send those to your favorite friend. And July 15th, incidentally, is Cow Appreciation Day. Doesn't matter to a lot of folks, but it does to us Texans. The third week in July is Hug Week. Give a few and add some smiles to it while you're doing that. And this is Lead Poison Control Month. That's one of the many toxic metals that can make us sick. And that's what we're talking about here with Arlene Brecker, author of 40-something Forever. We've just been talking about the implications about how people get sick and what that really matters. So let's talk about magnetism and then the toxic metals and how we can stay 40-something well, forever. They're, they're sure, yeah, they're, they're, they're very related topics. To, since it, this isn't something you can run out and do today or tomorrow, but it does give you hope for what's coming, and it will impact because it is going to revolutionize the way we think about healing, because what supplying this heavy-duty magnetic energy beam to people who need it, where they need it, helps them restructure naturally their internal organs that are failing. Now, is this sort of like a magnetic resonance imaging thing? Well, it's, uh, it's heavy gauss beams based on MRI technology, but in a very different way. 
and um, it is totally non-toxic. There are no side effects. You don't feel anything. The patient is lying on an open bed while the beams of 3,000 to 5,000 gauss Whoa. are put right at the injured place. Now, uh, not to get people too excited, but I will tell you what Dr. Roberts said to me when he called me the first time to introduce the subject to me, and he said, well, Arlene, I won't say that people get out of their wheelchairs and dance. I will say they get out of their wheelchairs, get behind them, walk and push them. <laughs> Dancing bones, is next week. <laughs> yeah. Bones that take normally three to six months to heal will heal in three to six weeks. Wow. Um, and so forth and so on. So we do have a medical revolution because it's going to get us away from depending on the only thing that orthodox medicine understands or appreciates these days is chemical cures and then not cures and they don't make you better and there's symptom removal or symptom cover-up and you need uh, a, a drug to undo the damage of the drug you just took and on That's and on right. and on. And natural healing depends on stimulating the body's own ability to heal itself. And this will be a giant step in that direction. Dr. Roberts calls it the real anti-aging development. Can I assume that uh, this is going to be part of the next edition of 40-something Forever? Well, you got it right. <laughs> we, have been, we have been invited to attend the opening. Harold will be the first congestive heart failure patient on that bed. Um, we will be interviewing the people who come up for that first two weeks. Excellent. And, uh, yeah, and I will even give you the name of the book. The book is going to be called, because it's going to be our story of congestive heart failure and how you can overcome it naturally, because you can't do it with what we call the 14 deadly drugs. Right. And you can read all <laughs> about that on our website. <laughs> That's and, right. And the book will be called Accept the Diagnosis, Reject the Verdict. Woo! That's pretty neat. Thank you. I think so. Yeah, I like that one. And you can get a full, uh, an early picture of what we're talking about and what we're doing and... Um, how far we've come on the first all-nutritional protocol for congestive heart failure on our website, on the very front page, healthsavers.info, you'll see um, Harold and I on our bikes, and we're not kidding. Harold biked from Reston to Paul's Church to get to church the other day, and you'd have to know how far that is <laughs> to appreciate uh, the significance of a congestive heart failure patient being able to do oh, that. I, I certainly appreciate that. We've had many talks about his health over the years. Yes. So we're really excited because this is a, a carrying forward of the work we started, what, 20 years ago now with uh, chelation therapy. And bypassing yeah, the bypass bypassing and so on. Bypassing the bypass. And we've come so far and learned so much and helped so many and we don't have to go back and say, hey, we were wrong about anything. Right. No, this supplements what you do with chelation in terms of taking out toxic metals. Exactly. And, and Dr. Bonley has talked about the fact that the magnetic energy treatments and the magnetic mattress, which you're familiar with, right. does help pour that toxicity, especially the mercury out of the heart. You were talking about mercury just before I came back on the thing now. In, um, in the Wall Street Journal, this week, last week, Tuesday of last week, they did a gigantic story about mercury toxicity. And, I, you know, normally I'd be really happy for a general circulation newspaper to get out the word about this. This article made me furious. Why? Because they got it all wrong. They did the whole story uh, slam-bamming tuna fish. Like, that was the main problem. So they're going to sue Bumblebee. Well, that'll take care of our problem, won't it? They never mentioned <laughs> dental amalgams. Was that cute? Do you think this is deliberate? Or vaccinations. Or vaccinations. They never talked about, they said, well, it doesn't really that much of a problem unless you're pregnant. Really? Right. Have they not seen the Journal of Cardiology where they did postmortem autopsies on the hearts of people who died of congestive heart failure? or stroke, or heart attack, and discovered that the mercury level in their hearts 
was 200 to 4,000 percent over what was normal, healthy, or natural. So are we talking about pregnant women? Are we talking about the aging heart? We're talking about the aging heart. Arlene, we'll be right back to join you to talk more about toxic metals. It's now about 30 minutes past the hour here on Feeling Better Naturally with Dr. John Trowbridge with the best medical updates ever. Sometimes, especially when our attention is focused on health problems, we forget that laughter is the best medicine. So our joke for today, (laughs) when little Johnny received his plate, he started eating right away. Johnny, wait until we say our prayer, said his mother. I don't have to, the boy replied. Of course you do, his mother insisted. We say a prayer before eating at our house. That's our house, Johnny explained. But this is Grandma's house, and she knows how to cook. (laughs) Oh, goodness. July 20th, 1969, American astronaut Neil Armstrong set foot on the moon. Where were you that day? Most of us have a clear recollection. July 31st, 1790, the first patent was issued in the United States. It was registered there as the first formal written beginning of a steady stream of new ideas for better things, and certainly... That's what we're hearing about today is the possibility of magnetism as a dramatic enhancement for our health. And not to miss our blast from the past, the Burma Shave signs. You remember those roadside signs. You can beat a mile a minute, but there ain't no future in it. Burma Shave. Oh, how wonderful. So let's get straight to the question. What are you waiting for? Sick and tired of feeling sick and tired or angry at not feeling better? Threatened with pain or limitations? Fearful about the future? Can you trust that you'll find the answers, the ones you need right now? You'd better take this responsibility seriously. You've got to find the answer somehow, and you'd better be right because your survival might be in the balance. So listen to what I have to offer. Over the past two dozen years, I've developed and improved integrative treatment programs to help many people suffering with a great variety of frustrating illnesses, fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue, heart disease, even after surgery, and especially congestive heart failure, shortness of breath, restless sleep or insomnia, poor circulation and leg pains, hypoglycemia and diabetes, poor memory, even Alzheimer's or other dementias, migraines and other headaches, rheumatoid arthritis and lupus, ulcerative colitis and other gut problems, frustrating skin conditions, disabling neck and back pains, sports injuries and arthritis, prostatitis, chronic urinary infections, chronic sinus and lung infections, hormones, thyroid, sexual performance, PMS, menopause, even menopause, and the list goes on and on because Restoring health deals with repairing basic body processes, not just squashing particular symptoms. You could feel better than you ever expected. I've lectured on these topics for over 20 years. I've written books and medical papers to share how to make healing happen. The leading authors and newsletter editors in preventive medicine have been personal friends of mine for years. In my 25 years of practice, I've found that very few people know that simple, effective, and cost-conscious solutions are available to help with their problems, starting now. And few people realize that several of the problems for which they're seeing different specialists are often related to the same basic cause. Correcting what is causing one problem might improve several other problems that frustrate, worry, or even anger you. Make your health care investment pay even bigger dividends in your future. Get details on our exclusive and unique cashable voucher program that can return to you cash dollars for your future expenses. We're here to save your health and save your wallet as well. And that's what this show is all about. And that's what we're all about at Life Celebrating Health in Humble. Call for a free consultation with one of our treatment assistants. No fee, no obligation. Just dial 1-800-FIX-PAIN. That's 1-800-F-I-X-P-A-I-N. You're listening to Feeling Better Naturally with Dr. John Trowbridge. Invite your family and friends to listen to these programs, a planetary education project of Life Celebrating Health. And we're back now with Arlene Brecker, my good friend and author, 40-something forever. You just gave us a startling statistic in terms of hundreds to thousands of percent increase in mercury concentration in heart tissues of dead people. That's right. And there is now significant evidence that congestive heart failure is not just an ordinary aging heart. But the result 
of accumulation of toxins that lodge in the heart muscle over many years that is then triggered by some stress or anxiety condition that forms the basis for the heart collapsing. Gosh, now who would have ever thunk of that, huh? Yeah. Um, It's nice that science is starting to show what we've been talking about. Well, it depends upon which science you're you're listening to. Not only did the Wall Street Journal get Mercury wrong, but today ABC got cholesterol wrong. And that's going to be part of tomorrow's headlines also. The um, latest um, news is health officials. Here's the headline, New York Times. Urge sharply lower cholesterol levels. Oh, geez. And that means sharply higher profits for the pharmaceutical industry that makes the seven drugs. Oh, wow. Oh, geez. You know, the problem is, is if we could just discover that God finally stopped making mistakes, we wouldn't have to make drugs to repair them. <laughs> well, at the same time as I have that headline, on the website where we put the latest news, the hot news, the breaking news, and yes, that's health called savers health confidential. Health savers confidential, that's right. Where we have that, we have the warning from two of my favorite alarmists. Uh, one of them, of course, is Dr. Jay Cohen, the uh, remarkably wonderful MD who wrote Overdose and warns us constantly in his newsletter about the dangers that you face when you're dealing with the ordinary health professional. And the other one uh, comes from um, Dr. Sidney Wolf, a friend for many, many years, who writes Worst Pills, Best Pills. And um, also one of his warnings this month in his newsletter on his website is about the major statin drugs, cholesterol-lowering drugs. Again, we're talking about that. And, you know... When all the really exciting news this month was about the new findings on homocysteine and how important elevated homocysteine levels are to the development over the years of degenerative diseases, and the the research that's coming out is not from, you know, somebody in the old med business. This is from the Framingham people. Right, the real doctors. The real doctors. That's right. That they think they are, and they do have the credentials to say they are, and they've been collecting data on hundreds of thousands of people for more than 25 years, and their latest finding, of course, they don't blast these around the way they do the cholesterol things, but their latest finding, first they admitted that elevated homocysteine levels was an underlying trigger for atherosclerosis, not cholesterol, homocysteine. Two months after that, they finally released the news that elevated homocysteine is an eight-year predictor of Alzheimer's. Eight years, ladies and gentlemen. That's a pretty good head start. That gives you a chance to reverse it. That's right. That's right. Now, this month, Two weeks ago, because, you know, I learned a long time ago from the great Charlie Farr that if something is bad for one part of the body, it's going to be bad for the rest of the body. So when they say, oh, this causes heart disease, you better believe that it's also going to cause something else once the research catches up with it. That's right. Who'd have thunk it? Right. Now we have the third release on elevated homocysteine. Men and women over the age of 60 with elevated homocysteine. Women, 20 times the incidence of broken hips and brittle bones. Men, 40 times. And you know, the, you know where the funny thing is, come from? this is what you've been talking about in 40-something forever for right. years. Right. It's what we tell people. I, I, I get so frustrated. I, I sit down and review how a, a, a male patient is doing with his chelation therapy, and his wife is so devoted and, and attentive. And I go, when are we going to start doing treatments for you, too? Oh, well, I don't have any problems. We just need to get him fixed. And people don't realize it's, it's both people's health that matters in this relationship, and you're just as much at risk as you get older, or even more so. But it can be stopped. It can be changed. That's right. And you know, 
And it's never too late to peel back that onion. Isn't that it's true? It's never too late unless you allow yourself to be trapped into going about it the wrong way. Exactly. That trap is to get to a doctor who says you have high blood pressure. Oh, here's a hypertensive medication. You'll be on it for the rest of your life. Well, let me tell you, it'll be a short life. <laughs> and that should be your first clue that what's wrong in your life is that you've got the wrong doctor. I love it, Arlene. We'll be right back with you with my favorite author, Arlene Brecker, 40-something forever. It's now about 40 past the hour here on Feeling Better Naturally with Dr. John Trowbridge with the best medical updates ever. And don't you know it today. We sometimes forget that spiritual centering is an important part of healing, getting better and staying healthier. And today's verse is from Proverbs chapter 16, verses 16 and 17. How much better to acquire wisdom than gold. To acquire understanding is more desirable than silver. The path of the upright avoids misfortune. He who pays attention to his way safeguards his life. Is that so very true as we talk? Again, with Arlene Brecker, author of 40-something Forever. You know, you, you laid the groundwork you, many years ago to talk about these things from a very authoritative standpoint in terms of how toxic metals and nutritional deficiencies literally rob us of our middle age and our older age? Well, you know, the research has been there. And um, I, can, um, I can remember when um, my introduction to this type of medicine, because, you know, we were AMA, NIH, you know. <laughs> All that stuff, you yes. Know, we were alphabet letter um, medical research science writers to start with, and then um, it's, it's as though God put his hand on our shoulder, and we ran into um, Dr. Sharaskin, and boy, that changed our life. Oh, for sure. And changed a lot of lives because of that meeting. Oh, gosh, and, and he did such great research, too. Yes, and, um, and that was, um, and that was uh, I was mentored by uh, Linus Pauling, Carlton Fredericks, the Shute Brothers, and I remember when vitamin E was a vitamin in search for a disease. That's right. That's the way they talked about it. <laughs> and then just a few weeks ago came this news release. And, you know, if they've been that wrong about vitamin E, just think of all the things they are that wrong about today. Because the latest finding, and this came... This was released February 11th of 2004. Vitamin E deficiency is more closely linked to deaths from heart disease than such better known risk factors as high cholesterol and high blood pressure. And guess who saw, said that? Dr. William Castelli, medical director of the Framingham Heart Study. Gosh, that yeah. would almost lead you to believe the science is really there, huh? Right. That what we've been saying all these years is really true. Exactly. And in that same vein, in that very same vein, I happened to be the, in the audience, lucky me, when Linus Pauling did his first speech on C-reactive protein. Oh, wow. And uh, Not you know, vitamin C-reactive protein, but he might have well named it yeah, that, too. Yeah, C-reactive protein. <laughs> And, of course, he lectured and lectured and lectured about the vitamin C connection. Right. To, and we, we, I, we, I wrote that book with Dr. Shereskin, The Vitamin C Connection That's to right. Heart Disease. And now headlines today were Linus Pauling vindicated, and they found a strong connection in loads of research now that they're finally admitting, and they're talking about why... The vitamin C RDAs, as set by the government, and the high vitamin C intake that's poo-pooed by the Orthodox community is actually strongly linked with heart disease as well as many, many other problems. Oh, gosh, yes. It's treacherous if you follow the minimum daily requirements. Well, it's an interesting, uh, it's an interesting explanation because they talk about the fact that the vitamin C high requirements are met more easily or not met well when you take just one large dose during the day. 
that either time release, or which is what we advocate, or gradual vitamin C intake during the day is going to help the body absorb the ascorbic acid that you need much better. So it's a little bit more complicated than before, but at least we have a better explanation now um, of the vitamin C. There is a new book coming out uh, on this, and you'll be able to read that soon. There's lots and lots of great new information, and you know, um, as, as you know, Dr. Trowbridge, the really exciting thing for those of us who've been in this business and this community for a while uh, is that nothing that we said once, long ago, has ever been discredited. It only gets validated as time goes by. More and more. Arlene, will be right back with you. It's now about 46 past the hour here on Feeling Better Naturally with Dr. John Trowbridge. For your better health, let's pause briefly for this public service announcement from the Iron Overload Diseases Association. You know, iron can be overloaded in the brain, and iron in excess is toxic. The problems that this can cause range from neurological to psychological. And in the latest medical literature, the diseases that have been associated with an overstore of iron are SIDS, that's Sudden Infant Death Syndrome in Kids, Progressive Supernuclear Palsy, a special kind of brain disease, Parkinson's, multiple sclerosis or MS, ALS, Lou Gehrig's disease, Alzheimer's and other dementias, brain cancer even, and depression and psychological disorders, even epilepsy and autism. And you know, undetected or untreated excess iron kills after inflicting injury to a variety of body organs. The patients and physicians' concern must be to detect any excess iron instead of establishing a diagnosis of hemochromatosis, which is a genetic disease. When iron levels test low, such as for anemia, the cause must be found because this can be a valuable clue to cancer, ulcer, or other chronic blood loss or infection, and it's dangerous to medicate with iron without first testing and second finding the reason for any deficiency. Discovering excess iron without vigorous uh, treatment really is kind of useless. Who cares? The patient's goal is to prevent liver cancer, heart attack, or stroke unloading the storage iron as fast as is reasonable. And the goal then of medicine is to provide maximum preventive care at the least expense. Patients must be aware of iron overload for their own protection. And you can find out more by going to www.ironoverload.org. That's I-R-O-N-O-V-E-R-L-O-A-D.org. Celebrity birthdays this month, entertainers abound. How about on the 15th, Linda Ronstadt, 1946. On the 17th, Art Linkletter, 1912. On the 18th, Red Skelton, 1910. On the 20th, Natalie Wood, 1938. The 21st, Robin Williams, 1952. On the 26th, Gracie Allen, that dear lady, 1902. The charming partner for George Allen. And on the 30th, Paul Anka, 1941. Astronaut and Senator John Glenn was born July 18, 1921. And, of course, the Gov, the Terminator, Arnold Schwarzenegger, 1947. And we're back now with Arlene Brecker, author of 40-something Forever. And, you know, Arlene, you pointed out the research is validating what you put into each of the books that you've written. 40-something um, Forever, of course, is my favorite because it talks so much about what we do to really help people. That's right. And that, of course, was the first big step in reversing the trend toward invasive surgical procedures which do nothing to help cure the condition that they're designed to mitigate. You know, but in contrast, come, it occurs to me, in contrast to our not having to say, hey, we were wrong, we're sorry, <laughs> orthodox medicine has to say it all the time. And we have one of those, gee, we were wrong this morning, too. Um, and this one is on Coumadin, Warfarin, and Aspirin. And the research shows that these are not reasonable, useful, or beneficial, and extremely dangerous for cardiovascular disease. And that here again, we have a natural substance that solves the problem that the dangerous drugs mask 
and it's called natokinase. And it, those who want to read the research that backs it up and why it works and how it works and how you can substitute dangerous drugs with another natural product that performs better, more safely, more effectively, it's on the website. That's right. And, uh, I, you know, they're wrong about cholesterol, which they've been... I, don't you remember when they were telling everybody how margarine was good for the heart? Yeah. You know, look at all back. the things that, oh, oops, oops, oops. Did we say that? Oops. <laughs> the medical oops syndrome. That's right. <laughs> and, and none of us have been guilty of that because we've been right all along. And there's a certain satisfaction, although there's a certain, oh, Lord, why did people listen? Why didn't That's they right. listen? Think of the people who'd still be well and alive. So listen now, because if we were right then, maybe we're right now, even though there are lots of detractors still saying, oh, chelation, that doesn't work, really? Don't try and tell that to the hundreds of thousands of people who've been chelated and walk around telling other people, and the dozens and dozens I hear from every single day, people who call, you know, I don't know the last time I bought 10 books for somebody, but people with nothing to gain except the benefit to someone they love call every single day and say, can I buy 10 books? I've got friends I want to send them to. I've got relatives who have to read 40-something. They ha- I've been trying to tell them about chelation therapy, but I think maybe if they read your book, they'd understand it better. We get thanks. We get asked for more copies. We hear from people who years later say, you know, I I had chelation, and boy, that really did the job. I'm getting older now, and I thought I'd come back and see what you have now for the aging heart. And the significance of all of these people having been, had their lives altered for the better, by something that the medical profession should never have rejected, is still questioning, still not supporting, still trying to rid in favor of expensive, invasive surgery and drugs. Isn't that, isn't that a shame? And unfortunately, it's, it's the reality, though. It is still a reality. Now, let me leave you with a really, really startling statistic. And this comes, and if you go to the website, um, there is a link for something called Death by Medicine. This is a absolutely well-documented, very scary, but very true research project conducted by my friend Gary Knoll and two of his associates who wrote a three-part diatribe against the state of medical treatment today. And it shows with great documentation that the leading cause of death in this country is not cancer, it's not heart disease, it's not Alzheimer's, it's not any of those. In this order, number one, adverse drug reactions. This is not drugs from the street. These are drugs that are prescribed by MDs that have been approved by the FDA. Number two is medical error. Number three is bed sores. Number four is infection. Number five is malnutrition. Number six is outpatients. Number seven is unnecessary procedures. And the last is surgery-related problems. The leading cause of death in this country, and worldwide for that matter, is the orthodox medical community. It's drugs, it's hospital treatment, and it's doctors making terrible mistakes. It adds up to somewhere between 783,936 people to 999,936 each year, depending upon whose statistics you use. 
That's a million people. Ladies and gentlemen, that is the equivalent of 2,200 to 2,700 people a day dying. It's the equivalent of a Boeing 757 crashing every day in this country. And think of the outcry that we would hear if that type of massacre was going on in any other arena. And it's going on in our medical profession. And there's no outcry because the greed of the pharmaceutical company the blindness of the Orthodox community to what it takes to make people well and their addiction to chemical answers when chemicals aren't the answer, and that's growing. And unless people stand up and understand that it's a their responsibility to make sure these things don't happen to them and their loved ones, it's no accident when somebody dies of an infection in the hospital. It happens every day. I hear these horror stories constantly. It's no accident when somebody strokes out after they were given Coumadin. It happens every day, and it happens constantly, and I hear these stories all the time. And, you know, you're going to have to look out for yourself. You're going to have to find a doctor like Dr. Trowbridge who really understands how to make people well and dedicates himself to doing it. You're going to have to know much more about your body and health and medicine than you thought you would have to, and it's not hard. And with the Internet, it gets really easier. And if you have any questions, you want to know what our answers are for these things, and we don't know it all, but we sure have been working hard to learn it as quickly as we can, come to our website or call us on our 800 number. We help people every single day the way Dr. Trowbridge does. And... Um, that's, uh, we, um, we feel that that's the obligation of uh, the people who have been blessed through their lives by association with the old med community as we have. Gosh, Arlene, I, I couldn't have said it better as a wrap-up. I wish that our show were two hours a day instead. So thank you so much for joining us with these wonderful perspectives. We'll have people join you at www.healthsavers.info. God bless you. Good night. Good night. And today's show is dedicated to those sons and daughters who, alarmed that their fathers and mothers are facing heart disease, strokes, macular degeneration, blindness, kidney failure, and even possible gangrene, spend the few minutes that it takes to find out about available alternatives, such as toxic metal removal, also known as chelation therapy, and other nutritional approaches to keep their families together for years to come. Our production engineer today is Mark Fisher, our production assistants, Catherine Hill, Kathy Guyon. Thanks for joining me today for the best medical updates ever. Have you learned practical pointers to help you regain and maintain better health? Maybe to help you guide your family or friends toward new solutions for their problems? Audio tape and CD copies of this show are available for your personal reference and to share with family and friends. Simply call 1-800-FIX-PAIN for details. What health problems are bringing you down or limiting your comfort, threatening your future? Share your questions by email, info, I-N-F-O, at healthchoicesnow.com, or by fax, 281-540-4329, or by mail. Just call 1-800-FIX-PAIN for our address or to call to talk with uh, one of our treatment assistants and let us know what special information we might send to you. Receive our free e-newsletter simply by sharing your email address with us and enjoy the free downloads available on our website, www.healthchoicesnow.com. Feel free to come by to see what's so special and visit with patients who are feeling better right now. They are anxious to share their successes with you in person. We're next to the Northeast Medical Center Hospital near Bush Intercontinental Airport. Call 1-800-FIX-PAIN for directions or a map. We'd love to show you where better health happens. Remember, if your money, your time, your effort, your comfort, or even your life is at stake, get the very best answers and the very best treatment you can find. Rely on experts who can make sense out of your problems, who have the experience to produce results for you. When life is your choice, failure is not an option. Our message is one of hope for a healthier future, and we aim to produce these results for you. Invite your family and friends to listen to our programs, a planetary education project, of life-celebrating health. 
exclusively on feeling better naturally with Dr. John Trowbridge. Have a great day and a wonderful week. Thank you.